You know, over the last couple of years, we've done a lot of live events and kind of rated how they are. And we had our first live event from Nothing, the new phone company. And I think we have to talk about it and the phone as well. Was um, their first event? It was their, uh, I guess they may have had a headphones they event, had, but like yeah. we usually talk about smartphone bigger events like that. And right. this was clearly their first. Um, it was slated on, was that Tuesday? Tuesday, I think. And yep. uh, any thoughts? Any thoughts right off the bat? Uh, my thoughts are the event was bad. Okay. You could see what they were ch- what they were for going sh- for. Like yeah. they had a very casual vibe, and you could see they're going for like the anti-establishment vibe. The more like lifestyle versus more like in-your-face tech spec yeah. kind of thing. It, but at the same time, like when we. You talk about Apple keynotes being like the gold standard and everyone goes, oh, well, they're so corporate. It's always the same people on stage, blah, blah. But they are uh, amazing at capturing your attention and stringing it along through new products and devices and services and features and things like that. And this event, I just didn't do that. It was it was casual. It was fine. I'm sure nothing fans were going to love it either way. But I think we, more importantly, now also have the reviews of the actual phone. Yes. Well, and I think that's what we want to go over. Well, the shining spot of the entire event was clearly when um, they showed shop.mkbhc.com on the screen. We did not know that was coming at yeah. all. That caught us by surprise. Um, but at the same time, with how surprised we were there, I realized later that that's also when they mentioned the refresh rate of the phone yep. that I completely missed, which to me felt like the overarching theme of this is I missed all of the specs it, or they just didn't say them. I, I didn't feel like I left that event knowing much more about the phone. Yeah. Well, now we have it. Yeah. The review's out. I guess uh, this is a chance to catch up on everything you want to know. Yeah. Literally ask me anything. I've had the uh, phone can, for about, over a week. I've been using it daily and liking it, liking a lot of it, not liking some parts of it. I want to start at price because to me that is how like I can form my opinion on this through the price and it's the thing I've been dying to know the most for sure. this. I think most people do. So just a precursor, it doesn't initially look to be going on sale in the US. So this is a uh, Great British Pounds. We have our starting okay. price is 399 Great British Pounds. Very similar to US dollars, but that's the official number. Um, that, by the way, will only be in black and that will be the eight gigs of RAM, 128 gig version. Only in black? Only in, only in black. That... Yeah, so they showed okay, off the sorry, white very one. Very confused already. Showed but... off the white one everywhere. You can't get that at the base price. Three ninety nine Great British pounds baseline nothing phone. Okay, you can bump up to eight gigs of RAM, two hundred fifty six gigs of storage for fifty extra pounds, and mm-hmm. for hundred extra pounds, twelve gigs of RAM and two hundred fifty six gigs of storage. Okay, so we've got three ninety nine, four forty nine, four ninety nine. So all yep. under five hundred. Correct. Um, I. Th- think that is under 500 is a, a great range to be in. Um, it's still, you know, I call it, we call this mid range. I think it's really safe to call this mid range. I know we've argued about that. Yeah. People have argued about that a lot, but this is mid range to budget. Um, it is clearly not an upper high end flagship. Mm-hmm. And it is also to me clearly not going for the lowest possible price. It is yes. firmly in the mid range. And I think it's smart. I think they literally just decided to target a price and build a phone around that price. For sure. Which I say in the review. Yeah. So we, um, in terms of the the chipset, we knew that already, but I'm trying to, where, where would you say the sacrifices are made in terms of this? Because mm-hmm. if you have a price under 500 and we already know that they focus so much on design and the glyph lights on the back, and stuff like that, that's going to take a chunk out of your margins right there. So mm-hmm. it, they obviously had to sacrifice some other stuff. Sure. Besides just the chipset, which we already know. Yeah, okay. So the chipset is the, ch- is the Snapdragon 778G+. Plus. Mm-hmm. They worked specifically with Qualcomm on it to enable things like wireless charging, reverse wireless charging. But it is an older chipset. It's not the new Snapdragon 7 Gen 1. But I think they'll argue it's a more stable, reliable chipset the the sacrifice if you want to use that word is really that it's it doesn't have the headroom of the ultra high end the big game big title gaming stuff the like heavy multitasking i still think it's a very smooth phone most of the time Mm -hmm. which is really nice Uh, and you do see that a lot in mid-range phones around this price so the chip isn't really letting me down in any way yeah if i was expecting a flagship this wouldn't be that but it is it is pretty good it is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, looking at these specs, some of the other things I'm seeing, um, 
I mean, you still have 45 milliamp hour battery, right? Um, 4,500. Oh. It is 33 watt charging okay. wired. And That's what is it? Not 15? great. It's, it turns, it actually turns out to be fine. I know the number is low on paper, but I found myself like not like annoyed with how slow it was Listen, charging. To me, when it comes to fast charging, I would argue it's the thing I care about the least. Um, if this has wireless charging and even slow wireless charging, I will be topped off pretty much the entire day through that by just having one wireless charger at my desk and one on my nightstand. Same. No so, part of me is ever worried about this, yeah. I think. Um, so it has 15 watt wired wireless charging. Yeah, that's totally fine. It's fine. I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Um, 45 milliamp hour battery is fantastic. Uh, Pretty good, yeah, for I a think phone that's of great. this size. So it's a six and a half inch screen. I, I talk about it in the review video, but my battery life is typically like one normal day. Like I end the day with less than 20% battery getting into the lower teens. So I'm like not quite comfortably ending the day with a full, like one full battery, but I don't have like 40% or anything like that. Okay. So it's, it's a one day battery. Um, yeah, it's just, it's not anything to write home about. This is the thing in the review. I have a couple things closer to the end that are not really that great or that bad. The speakers... Like they get kind of loud, but they're not that great. Like not worth writing home about. Yeah. Um, the battery life is another one of those things. It's it's not like super fast charging or anything. Like it's it's fine, but it's okay. You you don't want to miss on paper, so at least it's not a miss. Um, and there's other things like haptics that were to me uh, around average, like not bad. They're definitely not the soft, mushy, bad vibration motor, but they were a little bit awkward with typing on the keyboard and a little bit much sometimes. So somewhere in the middle. Okay. So it's it's just not that like perfectly fine polish that we're seeing in the thousand dollar smartphones right. out there. Um, sure. Okay. I, I Ultimately, I think that sounds pretty solid. There's one thing he mentioned in there that I was kind of confused about. And this is Carl Pay talking about how it's connecting better to third party um, uh, features, I guess. I forget if he said apps or features and he mentioned like connecting to your Tesla and okay. just like kind of toss that out there without anything. And we all just said, isn't that just what the app does? Yeah. So there's a couple interesting ecosystem things that they threw out there. Now, nothing makes headphones already. Mm -hmm. And so you would expect the nothing headphones to work the best, work great with uh, the nothing phone. But the same thing kind of happens when you plug in AirPods or when you connect AirPods via Bluetooth, it puts them up in the quick settings and it tries to like act like they're part of the ecosystem, okay. which is kind of cool. Now the Tesla thing, uh, I have a Tesla, I have the app installed, I signed in, it didn't work, it's in the experimental feature section, but okay. they were basically showing that you could also add like vehicle controls into your phone's quick settings. So if I wanted to unlock my car from outside, you know, 100 feet away in the parking lot, I could open the app and do that. But now it could be like one swipe down in the quick settings, which okay. would be cool. But it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah. So cool idea. But yeah, I'm still waiting for that to work. I also wonder, do you know, this is a random question, but do you know what your quick settings are off the top of your head? Yeah, I always have internet, like Wi-Fi connectivity yep. up there. I always have auto rotate, flashlight, and typically Bluetooth is the last one. And then okay. airplane mode is a swipe away. I was going to say, like, would you wind up replacing any of those if you had the option for your Tesla there or would you be okay with the at this point you're swiping twice yeah and then how far away is that from going into the app you know I might put something like uh starting the charge um in the quick settings basically okay. the only thing I really use my phone for is the bluetooth key so when I walk up to the car it unlocks okay. all the other remote stuff I manage I was going to dive into the app anyway to like change the charge limit or like tell it to wait till off peak hours to charge, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I might've added that. It was just like, it would've been cool if it worked and I could actually try it, but it just didn't. It didn't. So, have yeah. you tried it with AirPods? I haven't actually. There, no. there was, did you see the photo going around of how in the event it showed Carl's AirPods connected Straight to, to AirPods, rather yeah. than Maybe, you know, everyone was making fun of him, but maybe that was the ultimate Easter egg he's that he appealing. knew people were going to. I think he's just appealing to what he knows most people have. And That's, want. You know, I I have to give credit here. That is not something I recognized. Um, or did they mention that in the keynote or is that just something in the reviewer's guide? And they No, they went over a little bit of the like ecosystem thing okay. where you can build your own ecosystem. I, yeah. I, I think it's cool that they're open to working with other companies. Like we don't see that a lot with a lot of other smartphones or at least like, I mean, clearly I'm sure nothing would prefer if you use nothing headphones, but being a little more open into the default system settings of 
accepting other things, sure. I think is, is kind of I awesome. Think, I think I would characterize it as nothing doing extra work on their end to make it look like they're working with other companies. Okay. <laughs> I don't think Apple is giving them any sort of special oh, okay. features or access. Well, yeah, yeah, but but I appreciate that there's a company that yeah. recognizes there are other companies yeah. out there. True. Cool. That's true. That's um, One more thing to wrap this up. I, I think learning all of this specifically and after all that, I'm pretty proud of my um my assumption that this felt like the updated Beats headphones of smartphones. Would do, do you agree with that now looking back? Yeah, okay. So here's how I ended the video. Okay. Um nothing started with a pair of headphones and our eventual conclusion about them was all right, they sound okay. They're not particularly focused on performance, but they do have a really distinctive design. Mm -hmm. So like solid user experience, but it's focused on design. And then they came out with a phone and it was the exact same story. Not really too focused on performance, but a pretty solid user experience and a really distinctive design. So to me, that's the story of the phone. That's kind of also the beat story. But then when you look at the rest of like, all right, now what's nothing gonna make? They can keep building their ecosystem. Is NFTs. it a tablet? Is it, a, oh, I didn't go to NFTs, <laughs> but I went to like, is it a smart speaker? Is whatever else they decide to make, it will That's probably cool it will probably be along the same lines. Probably won't be focused on specs or performance, but it'll have a solid user experience, but it, it better have a distinctive, cool design. And that's what nothing's all about. What would you, if you could pick what nothing would do next, what would it be I uh, in be, that mantra? I, I think those are the two I was most curious about actually. Smart speaker would be kind of interesting. And I, I think like tablet that. would be cool. Ta tablet's hard. I think smart speaker, in a like um, transparent design, a cool would design look speaker, so sweet. That'd be dope. Yeah. I, I would like to see that. I yeah. think now I want that. Considering how good the headphones looked, and headphones really typically don't look that good, I would be very curious. The, maybe they maybe they make over ear headphones or something. Who knows? Over ear would be cool. I want the nothing home one. That would be sick. Okay, I dig that. Well, I'm sure Carl's listening, so we'll I want. See. I want a, a steak in that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> if you're interested in like all the rest of the deeper stuff about this phone, like the camera, yeah, like the uh, performance, the 120 hertz display. It's not LTPO, but it's 60 to 120 hertz. All that stuff. Definitely watch the full review. It should be up by the time you're listening to this. So check that out for sure. But that's the nothing phone. It's finally out and in the real world and exists, and we can. We can stop making puns I'm about it. I'm so happy I don't have to like accidentally make the pun every time. It makes me very excited for the future. I like That's how like half an hour ago you were like, we're going to go talk about nothing's event and how they did nothing. And I, we're like, I just put my head down. So I didn't walk to the podcast studio after that. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. Uh, I just want to end this by giving you the thought because I've also had the thought and I can't have it alone. Uh, JWST turns out to be the most expensive wallpaper generator in the world. The high resolution images it's kicking out and just publishing on the NASA gallery have become the wallpaper on half the devices in my life already. That's it only costs a few billion dollars. That's yeah, that's a heck of an investment. How many one dollar wallpapers will they have to sell? It was like a dollar per pixel, I think. It's oh my crazy goodness. number. I did of, not know that. That's like the crazy number of pixels. That's Probably also the uh, most expensive meme generator. Have you? Seen, there's some really good ones <laughs> out there. Someone edited like gritty into one of the I nebulas or whatever what it is. The internet always is is ready. I love that stuff. we can learn and have fun at the same time. That's what Waveform's all about. That's exactly. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of that. Catch you later.